Hi and welcome to part two of our tutorial for the UKSB Google Merchant Feeds extension. In this tutorial we'll be going over how to add and edit the Google attributes that Google requires for your products. First of all we'll head over to Catalog Categories. Now whether you edit, add a new one or edit an existing category you should find there's a feed tab and in that feed tab will be a list of Google product category fields. Depending on which Google default Google product category you set up in the feed settings, that will determine how many fields uh, are displayed here on this feed tab. We only set up the English uh, Google product category in the feed settings, so we only have the English field available to us in the categories. Whatever Google product category you enter in here will override the default Google product category you set in the feed settings, but it will only be applied to products that are linked to this category. Jumping over to catalog products, if we edit an existing product or if we add a new one, you'll see there's a new tab named feed. And on this tab are all of the Google attributes that you can add or edit for your products. These Google attributes are available also in the bulk product update tool, which is located in the extension feed settings. However, we'll first go over them in this product edit screen, and then I'll jump over to the bulk product update tool a bit later. Default for listing your product on Google Shopping is set to yes for all products. Obviously you can decide to choose no for this setting and that will stop this product from being added to the feed. The next attribute is the promotion ID. This is a new attribute that Google has added recently for their Google Merchant Promotions. This is an add-on service for, for Google which allows you to add promotions to your products for discounts, coupons and such. You will need to apply for that service separately and it's not required to list your products on Google Shopping. However, it is a bonus uh, and add benefit by adding a graphic illustrating what discount a buyer can get when they find your products in Google Shopping and on the main Google search page in the shopping results. You simply enter the promotion ID that you've set up in your Google Merchant Promotions account and that will then be applied to this specific product. The next field is expiry date. By default, all products that you submit to Google Shopping will be displayed on Google Shopping for 30 days. If your feed gets updated on a daily basis, that 30 days gets renewed every time. However, you can specify here an expiry date that is shorter than 30 days. Identifier exists. This is mainly used for businesses that offer and sell custom products that don't have a specific manufacturer's part number and don't have a barcode. Also, it's used for bundled products, where there's a product made up of several other products and which therefore doesn't have a single GTIN for the main bundle. We would set this to no in that instance. Otherwise, Google will be warning you that there's no barcode, etc. The condition attribute, you simply decide whether your product is a new, used or refurbished product. Brand field, this is an additional brand field. By default, our extension uses the manufacturer that you link to your product, if you've linked one at all. However, you can use our brand field to be more specific with your brand and it will override whatever you have selected as a manufacturer on the links tab. 
manufacturer's part number. This is the part number that the manufacturer gives the product. You'll notice that I clicked on this field and I get a pop-up warning stating that UKSB Google Merchant Feed settings are currently set to use the model field on the data tab for MPN. This is something we set in the actual feed settings uh, and therefore this field will be ignored and instead the model field on the data tab will be used in the feed for the MPN. Likewise with the GTIN, again if I click on it you will see a pop-up warning us that in the feed settings we have chosen to use the UPC, EAN, JAN or ISBN fields on the data tab. So again this field will be ignored and instead our extension will cycle through the following fields to find data. Obviously it's going to miss the UPC field on this instance and use the EAN field because it's got data in it and that will be used as the GTIN in the feed. If for some reason you have previously used these fields for data other than barcodes then it's a good idea in the feed settings to set the GTIN to use the GTIN field as this will be blank and not submitted unless you fill it in. Google product category. We've already come across this in the edit categories section and obviously in the feed settings there is a default for all products. Again it only shows the language or country fields that we have specified in the feed settings and again this can override anything we have put in the categories or in the default Google product category by entering a value here. And again you can access our Google product category tool by clicking on the blue plus icon. Multipack, simply enter a number if the product that you're selling is a multipack of X amount of items. For instance 100 packs of gloves or 100 bin liners you would enter 100. Bundle, you choose here whether this product is a single product or a bundle product and by default it's set as no which means it's not a bundle product, it's a one-off item. Adult field, again by default this is set as no and if your website is purely an adult orientated website then you're better off setting that in the Google Merchant account rather than here. However, if you're website sells lots of products that aren't adult and you just have the odd one or two that are then you can specify the individual product is an adult product. Energy class this is used for electrical items such as fridges, freezers etc. Unit pricing measure and unit pricing base measure. These are hardly used, however, you can uh, look into more info on them than the Google Merchant product specification by visiting the link at the bottom. The following four attributes are mainly used for clothing and apparel items. So here you would choose the gender the age group, the size type and the size system. Google also expects that you enter a size colour for your product if it's a uh, variant clothing item and to do that you simply fill out the fields below similar to OpenCart's options, however we do not tie into OpenCart's options as it would simply be too big an overhead when generating the feed, therefore you have to enter your variant options here manually and you simply do that by filling out the fields, you can choose an image if you wish and then clicking the plus to add the next and so on. 
Finally, we come down to the Google AdWords attributes. Custom labels, zero through to four. Give you five fields to enter a custom label. These custom labels can then be filtered at a later date in Google AdWords so that you can organize and change your cost per click strategies based on these custom labels. For example, you could set custom label zero as best sellers and then attach that to several of your products, the same custom label. Then in Google AdWords, you could filter for the custom label best sellers and give it a higher cost per click than the default cost per click that you've set for your other products. You simply can then click save and that will save the details for your products either at the bottom or at the top of the screen in the default location and there you go your product details have been saved for that product as mentioned before what you can do also is visit the extension feeds jump into the settings then on the bulk update products tab notice you will use this tool with caution because you will be affecting many products in one hit exactly the same labels apart from a few which are missing are on this section what you need to do is to untick the attribute that you're going to be updating and then choose the value or enter the value as you wish. You'll notice the MPN and the GTIN are missing. That's because in general, those attributes are only applied to single products. So you're better off doing that actually within the catalog products section on the individual products rather than doing it by bulk. We've included the clothing and apparel variant products sections here, but you'll most likely not want to be using that for bulk products. However, if all of your products are red or they're all of a size small, you can set these values and it will be applied to the products that you, you select in this grey section below. So you can choose your products that you want to affect from the attributes above either by manufacturer clicks multiple manufacturers categories multiple categories and even individual and multiple products please note that whatever you select in these sections all products within them will be affected not specifically cameras that have the manufacturer of Adidas, etc. It will actually be all products that are affected and then you simply click bulk update to update those products. Thank you for watching.